Jerry Agar for Ezra Levant. The Supreme Court has allowed face veils to be worn in court in Canada under some circumstances. The Muslim Canadian Congress has welcomed the split decision from the court. Rahil Raza is a Muslim Canadian journalist, author, public speaker, media consultant, anti-racism activist and interfaith discussion leader and the president of Muslims Facing Tomorrow. Welcome. Thank you. All right, uh, I think reading through a statement from the Muslim Canadian course, they said they welcome it, but I think they welcome it because it wasn't at least a full go ahead and wear the veil. But you come at it from a different perspective. Well, I think that we are at a very important crossroads in Canadian history. You know, here we have the Canadian values of liberty, equality, freedom, justice, and we have them up against cultural values. So, you know, as I read, read through this very long tomb, which is the judgment, uh, of course, there are parts where it does say that, you know, in certain cases, uh, the person may be asked to remove the veil or keep it on. There's no clarity. So we have the highest, uh, you know, seat of government in Canada actually um, bending backwards for a cultural practice. And throughout the judgment, they use the term uh, religious freedom. And that is problematic because what they're saying is that this is, that, you know, this is not an honest um, issue because it's not religious. You know, the niqab, the face veil, and for years we've been saying this as we have been fighting this face covering, is never was a religious requirement. It well, let me ask you a been. question about that, because yes. I get that all the time when I talk yes. about this on the air. And um, my, my worry about that, about uh, making a declaration that it's cultural as opposed to religious, is that I know we have a lot of denominations, for instance, in Christianity, uh, because not everybody agrees on what the Bible says. Can't it be the same thing? Could it not actually be a religious consideration for a woman? Well, let's put it this way, that it's not just me saying this. The Sunni community among Muslims is the largest majority. And the seat of learning for Sunnis is Al-Azhar University. You know, that is like their Vatican. And that's where these statements come from. So it is from Al-Azhar that the statement has been made that the face covering is not a religious requirement. I mean, we have to look at our history. It never was a religious requirement. So for anyone can say that anything is a religious requirement. Wearing bangles could well, be a I'm religious afraid that requirement. That's where we're going. Well, well, that's where we're going, and we are going there because this is a cultural issue. So I have a deep concern about the fact that, uh, you know, in a backhanded way, the Supreme Court is saying that, you know, a face covering is a requirement for Muslim women. So, so what does that make me? What does that make the majority of women who don't cover their face? And they are bending backwards and passing jurisprudence based on a cultural value. And that is opening a can of worms because it mm -hmm. opens us up to the idea that do Canadian values of justice and freedom, uh, you know, are they trumped by cultural values? Is, is every woman in Canada who's wearing a veil, in your view, wearing a veil because she wants to? Yes, I guess she is. Or no, maybe I mean, she's, uh, do we have situations where family is sort of forcing people to live a certain way? There may be situations where she's being forced to. There may be situations where she doesn't have an option, where she's been told that it is perhaps a religious requirement. But you just have to think about it in terms of logic and reason. How can hiding one's identity, how can a covering, a mask, a veil, be any, in any way a, a requirement of any faith? You know, it's not humanly possible. I mean, one has to have identity, and especially in cases of justice. You know, justice is all about body language and eye contact and being able to see the victim's face and being able to see the accused face. So it's, it's very problematic if you have someone who's only, whose eyes are showing, and if they wear dark glasses, then of course, you know, you, you wouldn't you, see anything. You uh, wouldn't no, see anything. Right, I get that. Uh, there was an excellent point, though, made this morning by Christy Blatchford, who does a coverage of a, she's a journalist with the National Post, covers a lot of court cases. Mm -hmm. And she said there are cases where people are allowed to testify from behind a screen, where maybe testimony of children would be read in. So she says, we already have precedence for this. You do. So then why does a face veil have to be allowed? I mean, that's not being done on the basis of a religious requirement. What I'm trying to say is that the whole idea of this ruling being passed is based on something that is not correct. It's an incorrect assumption. It has been made by the Supreme Court that this is a religious requirement. And it says so in the judgment. And I find that very awkward as a Muslim woman when I know that it's not a religious requirement. It's not in the Quran. It's not allowed at the Hajj, which is the pilgrimage for Muslims. And for years we've argued. Now, at least this current conservative government took a wonderful step when they said that there should be no face covering for women when they're taking the citizenship oath or right. for Canadians when they're taking the citizenship oath. Now this is clarity and that's what's needed. 
just clarity to say that there should be no face covering. They don't so, have to mention women or Muslims or niqab. No mm -hmm. face covering because the identity needs to be seen. As a Muslim woman, you're at the mall, you're walking down the street, you see a woman completely covered, got the burqa, got the face covering, everything. Do you find that uh, disappointing, insulting? What, what do you, what? I do. I get my backup. Uh -huh. and, and so if people You say have, something? No, I don't say something, but I, I, I find it, it just does not fit. I mean, if these women want to be doing this in Saudi Arabia or in some tribal country where this has been imported into Canada from, that's fine. But it does not tie in with Canadian values of openness, of communication, of freedom. And these were the issues that have been mentioned in this ruling by those two justices who actually said that it should be banned. You know, there were two justices who said mm -hmm. that the niqab should be totally banned from the court uh, courtrooms because it's not part of the openness that is part of the Canadian justice system. I mean, justice is about communication. How can you have communi communication with someone who, whose face you can't see? I wouldn't want someone with a niqab teaching my children. Okay. Is that happening? Well, of course. I mean, I guess that might be next. That might uh, be next. In the schools, the teacher, uh, your little child shows up for the yeah. first day of school and the teacher has a face covering. I think a lot of Canadians would say, wait a minute, I'm not for this. I want to know who I'm dealing this with This is here. why I'm saying, and I will repeat, that this is a very important crossroads for Canadians. And we have to make a decision. And we at Muslims Facing Tomorrow are going to pursue this to the highest level to say that a face covering should not be allowed anywhere in public. Because on driving licenses, for voting, for air travel... It's a security risk. And we have said, that. We have said yeah. this again. It's a health risk. It's a security risk. It's a communication risk. Uh, it risks uh, those women being ghettoized because it's very hard to have a conversation. So from social, physical, mental, emotional uh, perspectives, it is not something that is positively acceptable. So we need to look at this and make very clear decision and say face covering should not be allowed. Yeah, well, Muslim women are in the best position to be bringing the fight. But right now, of course, you've lost a major battle because it's the Supreme Court and it takes a long time to get back there. But I appreciate yes. your time today. Thank you very much.